Life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better it gets. The adventure of life is to learn and the nature of life is to change. We're here to witness yet another change in a great person's life who absolutely needs no introduction because he is a great man and great people are known and need no introduction. He is an engineer by profession and has served here in Kuwait for the past two decades. He also owns and runs a school back in India and is also involved in agro farming. He is a great example for the upcoming youth. And at that note, I would want to quote a saying, being inspired is great, but being an inspiration is an honor. And I take privilege in introducing such a great person. You might have already guessed who I'm talking about. Yes, it is none other than the great man, Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan, sir. Welcome, sir. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time. It means a lot, sir. So to start off, uh, you may tell a few words about yourself to our viewers. So it's wonderful to meet this young, talented girl who is part of this Kuwait community. And uh, it's a privilege for me to give her an interview. And before I start off with uh, what we are going to talk, let me give you a small insight into what I am. I am basically a mechanical engineer by profession from College of Engineering, Gindi. Completed way back in 1986. Then started off working in a fertilizer company called Speak from 86 to 94. Moved to Kuwait in 1994 as an engineer in uh, Kuwait National Petroleum Company because uh, Kuwait, after liberation in 92, they were in the mode of uh, reviving uh, all the refineries to their 100% uh, load. And I started to work in Min Abdullah refinery since then. And it is now almost 29 years. Moved up the cadre in uh, the refinery. And today I work for the Quality Assurance Department of uh, Kuwait National Petroleum. So the whole Kuwait sector, oil sector here in Kuwait is celebrating you. So you, because you proved your professional capabilities, so now we've kept your professional life aside. Now everybody wants to know about you as a person, as a father, as a son, as a husband. So uh, you know, uh, as I was researching about you, your parents are uh, really educated. Um, all uh, both your both of your parents were holding highly diplomatic positions so it would have been more easier for you to establish yourself back in india so uh, why did you choose to start from scratch in an abroad that's a lovely question which i have to answer myself first as you rightly put it yes i am from a very bureaucratic family my father started in the government service during the british time that is uh, pre-independent India. So he was trained in the Staff College Dehradun and Staff College Delhi and joined as a district employment officer of uh, Madras Presidency. So that is how Tamil Nadu was called in those days. It is 1946. So as a matter of fact, I could have also gone about with my uh, bureaucratic activity. But upon completion of engineering, I since I joined in a fertilizer company, from towards going towards bureaucracy, I was getting more and more involved into the corporate life. So, but corporate life in the first seven, eight years in India did give me a lot of thirst towards trying to excel in a field where I am aware of. So, that is one of the reasons I wanted to move into oil and gas. So, since I got a break in the early days, and I also got a very plum type of a job in Kuwait. I thought it is better to venture into this activity when I was just 30 years old. That's the reason I moved to Kuwait. That's great. So that's very well said. Uh, so as we're here sitting about success, uh, success as a term is a very subjective term as everyone has different point of views regarding the term success. So what is your point of view regarding success, sir? So one of the very main criteria to be really successful is Try to live your life in peace and happiness and do your service to society in the best of the activity. That is one thing which I have learned from, probably because of my familyhood. And that is what I really culture myself to be as success. Of course, professional excellence is part of the game. But in actuality, what is really a success is trying to do something for the society 
and trying to keep yourself happy very well said sir it's very uh, words of wisdom every person has their strengths and their weaknesses and the person who works on their weak points is the person who attains success so you've been working for the past two decades so what are your weak points sir that you worked on to be very frantically or to be very frankly saying what exactly is a weak point i look at life in a different angle i always prefer to work on what is my strength and that has always been my cult of lifestyle right from the beginning right from my schooling and my college days i always worked on what is my strength because i preferred to be on that way than looking at things in a negative activity but being positive and being strong and what you are well versed on is always been my success very well said so optimistic way of thinking that's a really good thing uh, so every person uh, wants to live a utopian life with no regrets uh, so that is actually not possible frankly speaking because everybody leaves something behind that they might regret in their life ahead so what are your experience regarding that sir see sir i i was involved in variety of activities over the period of 59 years in life on the earth so one specific activity in which if you say that i regret was not trying to bring dr abdul kalam to kuwait i was deeply involved in trying to bring him to kuwait not because to convey some information to the elders but to the youth of the group over here who are in the various schools in kuwait since that was not possible i do have a regret for that particular aspect in life uh, so as we know so our nation india is progressing at a very high high pace now it uh, the situation right now in india is not how it was like a two decades back how when you and your generation left india to thrive outside so but still uh, right now the younger generations graduating are willing to settle abroad so what is your uh, advice to them sir no this is really an euphoria of speaking that uh, a big group of people are always leaving india when you look at the whole scenario of the population of india we are talking in terms of few lakhs of people leaving the country when the whole population is about 140 crores i'll just give you a small example of how number of people who are leaving the country and number of people who are doing the activities in india today indian gdp has moved almost several points from what it was 10 years ago we have now come to a level where uh, our gdp is almost uh, third or the fourth in the world it is just not done by the nris it's basically done by the people who are living in india so the public sector companies the private sector companies the various technology companies in india have utilized the talents which is available in india and we are doing the best but at the same time the nri community which has moved out of india has also given a leap of an activity for the indians back home so the back office facilities that is being cultivated in india is all because of this nri community which has moved out of india probably to the west and also to the middle east today when i came to kuwait way back in 1994 we just had about 100000 indians in kuwait today it has moved to about uh, a million and all this is because of some uh, good souls which came here was able to convince the people in kuwait that india has got the talents so it is a movement of that talent from here which has provided an opportunity not only for bringing up the family to a higher level back in india at the same time moving the whole nation's pride across the world very well said sir very well said uh, the movement of labor is also the movement of culture exactly yeah, very well said sir exactly so um, many people are looking up to attaining the amount of success that you have attained in your life sir so now you now when you already attain that success what is next in your life sir sir when i started my professional life the india where i grew the india what i look is far different from india what it is now so i'll just give you a small example of uh, what it was india when we left the college in 1986 and uh, entering into a professional field so within 3 or 4 years of that time india was in a in a grave situation where we had to sell gold 
to re meet our requirements f towards the World Bank and the IMF. But today, India has built up almost $550 billion of uh, available uh, surplus funds with us. It's all because of the beautiful work done by the people over these years. So when you look at this particular scenario, it is basically the improvement in the educational standard, the improvement in the technology, the improvement in the overall category of lifestyle that India has produced. We have moved to a great level of capitalistic approach. We have also built a beautiful democracy. All this success is all because of the total relationship between all these interactions and what has made us all proud. So, um, personally, I know many people who are struggling to manage their personal, professional and social life. Now, you have been managing it so well for a very long time. So, so any tips regarding that? Sir? No, this is also a very interesting question which many people have asked me. Uh, I would rather say put it out in, in a different fashion. Okay. Uh, probably I was blessed with a family background. And I was also blessed with a beautiful family, which was very supportive of what I was able to do. You know, right from my uh, college days. And then later on, when I became a family man, which I became pretty early in life. Because uh, I had to venture to be a family man when I was less than 25 years old. <laughs> so, so right from that particular age, since we had a better understanding of what is uh, life, and since my wife was also a very educated lady and uh, she is also from a background from the agricultural uh, granaries of Tanjaur. So she did provide me a lot of strength. So our kids upbringing, she had a better uh, understanding of it. And even though I was only a slight catalyst, but I was more involved in my professional life, my social activities. And also, I did have a very big sporting life until my 50th year. Thanks to probably the good blessings and thanks to my wife in specific, I would rather say. Uh, so, I, I, we know, sir, you've administered a lot of associations here in Kuwait. So, you must have uh, came across a lot of political dramas. So, uh, anything regarding that, sir? Okay. So, after a few years of coming to Kuwait, we were involved in uh, an association called as Tamil Nadu Engineers Forum. It was started in the year 2000. And then today it is the 23rd year of its uh, uh, existence. So the whole concept of having this forum was to ensure that there is a friendship being created among the Tamil community of engineers, not only for themselves, for, uh, for upbringing their own uh, professional skills, but also creating an, a situation where uh, the families interlink. At the same time, we started to have various other associations. But each of these associations have their own strengths. So here, politics is part and parcel of life. D today, one of the best way of governance is democracy. Since as Indians, we have rejoiced the democracy. And since as also Indians, one of the biggest propellant of uh, a lively democracy Educational background, trying to understand people, trying to give up, at the same time trying to adjust. So these type of uh, interactive behavior of a human being does provide all the opportunity to ensure that politics that is being around you doesn't go in a bad way, but to provide an opportunity where everybody has a space to grow. Today, every cultural association in uh, Kuwait has grown and it has been of a positive nature because the next generation of kids, they had an opportunity to know what is organization, what is interpersonal relationship and what is to live in a society. Very well said, sir. Very well said. As we are talking about family, behind every successful man, there is a prayerful and hardworking woman and not just a woman, not as every married man would be successful. With your due permission, sir, I would want to call upon your soulmate, your backbone, your wife, Mrs. Satya Lakshmi Narayanan. Okay. So, you want me to talk about her or what is it that you want? I would want to call her. Uh, okay. So the family is a very important part of everyone's life. So, sir, how much of it did 
affect you and how much did it help you in every aspect of your life sir in my particular life if you ask me how much of input i got from my family i would rather say it's not 100% it's 200% because uh, one of the very i vital aspect of uh, living in kuwait was uh, trying to have some type of a transportation for each of you so what is very very important for me was uh, i was very mobile since i had my car and my driving license my kids were growing up because uh, when we came here our son was hardly 4 years old then we had our daughter and both of them started to attend delhi public school at the same time you know how the indian curriculum is it is just not limited to academics we had to concentrate on other activities at that particular moment i would rather say my wife came to my rescue and she was preparing herself since she already knew driving in india she attended a driving school here took up driving and then that is history because at one particular moment i was involved in tamil nadu engineers forum i was involved in uh, kuwait cricket teams i was also involved in another association called frontliners then later on i was involved in pongu tamil mandram i had little bit of involvement in kuwait tamil changam so variety of activities are going on in the meanwhile i was quite often getting involved into embassy activities because there were a lot of workers which were facing some type of a trouble or the other so at this particular moment to ensure that kids are not deprived of what they have to get i would always give the fullest credit to my wife satya who was giving me such a level of helping hand that what lakshmanan could do today was highly credited to satya getting involved into ensuring that children are not deprived of any of their needs very well said sir now i would want to ask ma'am your journey with kuwait it's been three decades now right you came to kuwait so your journey with kuwait it's it was truly an incredible journey at kuwait for me i came with uh, no friends here coming from a close knit family i was at loss but having gathered whomever i met i met lot of wonderful people and became friends with them. and then afterwards my life went on as my husband said taking my children for co curricular activities and driving them for other extra classes i had beautiful life in kuwait so there was, was a time I was, where uh... i was supporting my family for uh, in that and moreover i enjoyed my life with my friends who were extended family for me i was taking my kids to balavikas when they were very young and afterwards my daughter was learning tennis bharatanatyam hindustani carnatic my son also learned karate and other martial arts uh, i was helping my fa- husband in supporting him the, my doing all this extra work and of course i do the grocery and vegetable shopping also so i didn't trouble him much to take care of the house as he was busy with his cricket and association works and uh, of course skin pc work also that could that much support i was able to give him now one of the important aspect is she had to drive 30 to 40 kilometers between each of these classes so that gave me lot of uh, extra time so that i could concentrate on societal activities because on some occasions to take care of some workers requirement we had to go as far as jahara or sometimes even to wafra so these activities could be done only because of the free time i was able to get since she was able to take care of the kids so you have lovely two kids so it would be lovely to know about them what they do and how they are uh, probably that is one of the biggest self achievement of me thanks to satya for uh, bringing up those kids to be absolutely adorable our son who is the eldest his name is varun chand he studied his uh, schooling at kuwait at delhi public school then later on he went on to study his mechanical engineering at college of engineering gindi and university chennai and then subsequently he went uh, did his mba at uh, canada at uh, iv canada and now he works for a pharmaceutical company as a head of material management 
our daughter she too did her schooling completely in uh, delhi public school kuwait and then she moved on to do her architecture and now she is satisfactorily and very happily involved in an area of architecture where uh, she is into town planning with an environmental friendly activity which is close to her heart so so these are the two kids both of them are married they are well settled in life probably my wife can add something more uh, i have a son and daughter we are really proud of them we feel they have achieved a son after doing mba he always sees to that he guides his sister what course to take how to go about in life he reads lots of books and is keenly interested in writing mostly about sports and a few other subjects and daughter is very interested in sketching various uh, historical buildings and uh, whatever she sees is appealing for her uh, we, uh, they they have achieved both academically and uh, co-curricularly also so we are very happy and proud about it uh, so so now after living here uh, for three decades uh, as a family you're moving back to your motherland so as a family what is the future pla- future plan for the whole entire family so i was talking to you about uh, moving out of professional life from starting school for a satisfaction of uh, your personal goal i always had another very big interest in my life which was to do something in the agricultural field uh, it was mainly due to the fact that uh, i was hailing from uh, tanjavur the granary of uh, south india uh, that particular aspect was deeply moving me towards uh, the agro farming area so we started investing uh, our time and energy to get involved into agricultural activities so when we started this by a learning cycle we were in uh, in a very very primitive way of doing agriculturing we started at around 750 kilograms of paddy in about an acre of land today we have moved to a level where we are able to produce around 1800 to 1900 kilograms of paddy in one acre so i want to get and involved more and more into agro farming areas so this i feel is going to give me a lot of satisfaction i want to venture into an area where i am in a position to produce 2500 kilograms of paddy in an acre of land the second portion is uh, i am also deeply involved into doing minimum utilization of fertilizer maximizing production of uh, these crops so in this i am trying to tie up with uh, the local people over there and we are we have now to an extent achieved something but being in kuwait and trying to do some activities back home was difficult so probably after uh, the next few months when i am totally going to be in india i would definitely have a concentrated time to improve this particular skill and that is going to give me a lot of satisfaction yeah coming from a big family and a close knit family with lots of siblings i'm truly looking forward to go and settle back with all my siblings and my mom who is still uh, who is running 96 years that's the only thing which speeded up for us to go and settle back in india moreover coming from uh, my background is also agricultural background as my father was owning more than 100 acres of land and having two three rice mills so i could definitely support my husband in his agriculture more than him i like to have cows and goats and also poultry farming i am keenly interested in that also let's see how it goes by uh, so as a couple it's universal that arguments and quarrels happen so you know it's really interesting to know about it as an elderly couple i you know the world wants to know with due respect uh, how often do you argue and who takes the first initiative to you know patch up patch up again that's one more very interesting stuff uh, say i think uh, in the initial stage i was telling you that uh, i got married when i was 24 and a half and uh, she was much younger to me at that particular time 
So we, we, we would rather say that uh, we are not absolutely an 100 percent ideal couple, but more than 95 to 99 percent we are an ideal couple because our families were similar in nature, both large and also from uh, Tanjavur background. So what was plus in both of us was being the last kid of the family, we had seen the elders, how they have interacted in their life. So we learned from that particular aspect of life. And when we became uh, parents, and I think I became a father when I was not even 25 years old. So it gave us uh, a, a situation where uh, we had to really understand each other in a better form so that our siblings, our kids do not face any type of a negative impact. So on that particular aspect, uh, we had a wonderful life in the last 34 years. Not that we never had any type of an argument with this aspect, but uh, I would rather give more credit to my wife because her strength was patience. So we were, we were there was hardly a time where uh, we could have an, uh, a bigger level of an argument. But even when there was a bigger level of an argument, each of us we were able to reconcile at a faster pace because our life and goal were all centered towards the children's upbringing so that they are in a modest lifestyle to ensure that uh, longevity of having a good parentage was important. So we always maintained that type of uh, life at home. We had to do a lot of sacrifices in this matter. We never ventured into going out uh, for situations where uh, we had to go for some type of a movies which were highly related towards uh, the kids. So in that way, in every aspect, we were concentrating on uh, the children being taken to some type of a theme park. Evening uh, situations, we used to take them to, I think many a times we have gone to the British Library, which was in Kuwait. We spent some uh, good level of uh, uh, half a day or even three-fourth of a day to be sitting there with both the kids. And Satya had a very good level of uh, patience where she would read the stories for both the kids for hours together. And uh, probably both of them are involved into academics. I think I will give the full credit to my wife Satya. Yeah, when it comes to difference of opinion, I feel uh, I depend mostly on my husband's guidance for his well matured and he guides us very well. So mostly we get along well. It's very rarely we have difference of opinion. Those cases we learn to live with difference, but we argue and come to a consensus and we take the best solution possible. Mostly according to me, we are quite lucky and we get along very well. That's, that would be my answer to your question. Quite true about it. That's true. As a matter of fact, both our families, uh, uh, I was born after six daughters. She's go born after uh, five daughters and four uh, elder brothers. So all of them, uh, they really talk that this particular couple is quite ideal. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your words of wisdom. It was lovely listening to your point of view about life. We are here to talk about retirement. Retirement is a lovely phase of life as it's an end of a chapter and the beginning of a new lovely chapter in life. Leaving behind workspace is a bittersweet experience as you look behind the memories of your professional life. Anyhow, we didn't expect this time to come so soon, sir. Thank you so much for having this lovely conversation with us. It was lovely knowing your point of view regarding life, success and professional life. And I am sure your words of wisdom would have helped a lot of people out there. And anyhow, a person like you who has worked hard for the past three, four decades, I know cannot sit idle at home. So you have a lot of future plans regarding agriculture, school and social works. So I know you would sit idle. Anyhow, you're just going to keep yourself away from a workplace from an ideal workplace. So it was lovely speaking to you, sir. Thanks to technology, distance is not a big deal now because everyone is just a phone call away. 
so uh, you know having connections is not a big deal now and once again thank you so much for your lovely words sir and thank you so much everyone thank you so thank you very much for your time it was wonderful that i was able to share some of the deep things which were involved in my life and important uh, about this particular aspect is uh, sharing of what you have learned so that uh, if one or two people get stimulated by what you have done if that can give them a progress i will be more than happy and uh, once again i thank you for interviewing me and uh, permitting me to give you a view of what i had observed life is and success is very very kind of you i just wish you and bless you to have a great life in thank future thank you so much so getting a blessing from a person like you is an honor to me. thank you thank you so much good luck good luck thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you.